Welcome, and thank you for joining the talk titled Cognitive Disability Among Arab Americans by Nativity Status and Arrival Year, Lack of Evidence for the Healthy Migrant Effect. I would like to acknowledge and thank my co-authors, Drs. Tiffany Kindred and Laura Zahavni. This work was supported by the Michigan Center for Contextual Factors in Alzheimer's Disease. So to start, I want to share with you that limited research exists on cognitive disabilities among Arab Americans, especially as it relates to arrival year among the foreign born. Therefore, the aims of the study were twofold. One, to estimate the age and sex-adjusted prevalence of cognitive disability by nativity status and arrival year among Arab Americans. And the second aim was to examine the associations of nativity status and arrival cohort on having a cognitive disability while adjusting for potential confounders and other contributing factors. Our aims were successfully achieved using data from the American Community Survey. Before I get into that, I wanna talk about the sample. We looked at 11 years of data from 2008 to 2018. This was cross-sectional data from the American Community Survey public use microdata samples. We limited the sample to Arab Americans ages 45 and older based on previous studies showing that signs of cognitive disability emerge among middle-aged adults. We also wanted to be consistent with other studies that used 45 years of older as the age cutoff. Given these inclusion and exclusion criteria, the final sample included 27,564 Arab American adults. Of these, 10,727 were US born, and 16,837 were foreign-born. I'd like to talk next about the independent, dependent, and confounding variables. The independent variable in this study was a combined measure of race, nativity, place of birth, and ancestry. Within foreign-born Arab Americans, we categorized year of entry, looking at 1925 or later, arrival cohorts, we looked at pre-1991, 1991 to 2000, 2001 to 2013, and finally 2014 to 2018. We modeled the study on one that focused on Arab Americans using census data, and that study also used these four arrival cohort times. The dependent variable in this study was having a cognitive disability. To get to this question, the ACS asked participants whether they have difficulty concentrating, remembering, or making decisions due to a physical, mental, or emotional condition. And the response was either yes or no. We also looked at uh, confounding factors such as age, sex, marital status, educational attainment, and poverty level. For those who were foreign born, we looked to see if citizenship status, length of time in the US, and English, English language proficiency were controlled for as acculturation characteristics, again, only among the foreign born. With regard to our statistical analysis, we looked at weighted means and standard errors. And then in the multivariable logistic regression, we use that to examine the association between nativity status and having a cognitive disability. US born Arab Americans were the reference group and the comparison group was foreign born Arab Americans. So this is what we found. Among those with a cognitive disability, foreign born Arab Americans were older, female, more likely to be married and less likely to have a college degree or more. Among foreign-born Arab Americans, those with a cognitive disability were more likely to have lived in the US longer and to report limited English language profic proficiency. There was no statistically significant difference in, in cognitive disability for arrival year to the US. We also examined the age and sex adjusted prevalence of a cognitive disability. And what we found was that the prevalence was lower for US born Arab Americans at 4.0 compared to 6% for foreign born. Among the foreign born, and very interestingly, these estimates varied by arri arrival year. 
For those arriving between 2014 to 2018, the prevalence of cognitive disability was lower at 3.4% compared to 4.6% and 4.8% for years 2013 or earlier. In our multivariable logistic regression analysis and among the foreign born who arrived prior to 1990 who arrived prior to 1991 as the reference category, those arriving between 2014 to 2018 were approximately 20% less likely to report a cognitive disability. In this next section, I discuss some reasons to help explain the finding of the higher prevalence, 6%, of cognitive disability among foreign-born Arab Americans. One is that many Arab Americans, especially in the last 10 years, have immigrated to the US from war torn countries, perhaps as refugees. The toll of this process has greatly affected their mental health, as was observed by another study conducted by myself and my colleague, Dr. Tiffany Kindrat, where we looked at serious psychological distress, which was much higher among foreign born Arab Americans compared to US born. Contextualizing the findings to include arrival cohort helps us understand the importance of the political, social, and economic, and other issues that inform health status of immigrants. For example, the Immigration Act of 1924, the Displaced Persons Act of 1948, the Immigration and Nationality Act of 1952, and many others all affected the health status of immigrants prior to and after arrival to the US. These acts determined who could immigrate, why they could immigrate, how long it would take for immigration, what benefits, if any, they would receive as immigrants, what health screenings they would need to obtain prior to and post arrival, and which employment opportunities were available to them in the US. In other words, immigration policies can have both adverse and positive health effects on the individual. Next, I'd like to discuss some strengths and limitations of our study. One strength is that we use nationally representative data, a large sample size, and we were able to dis disaggregate the Arab American population from non-Hispanic whites using two questions on ancestry. One limitation of the ACS is, might be the question on cognitive disability. It was a self-reported question, However, due to the high rates of underdiagnosis of cognitive disorders, such as Alzheimer's, particularly in minority communities, self-report data may actually have higher sensitivity than formal diagnoses. Another limitation is that the American Community Survey doesn't collect information on other social determinants of health, such as environmental, cultural context, or the individual's physical and mental health characteristics, such as chronic disease and depression. Nevertheless, we believe our current study provides preliminary data to motivate future studies of cognitive disabilities among Arab Americans. Lastly, from a policy perspective, both state and national level efforts need to include an ethnic identifier for Arab Americans so that, so that health and health behavior patterns can more easily be observed and used in prevention and intervention efforts. Thank you for your time. I hope you found this talk useful and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.